Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How's everyone doing? Alhamdulillah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. To dive right into the topic that we have. A very important topic for anyone from any walk of life, old and young, but especially a topic that requires attention and implementation in our times today, in our volatile times today. The topic of bringing forth and strengthening and magnifying our identity. What is identity, first of all? Identity is not just that you're a Muslim. Identity is a very complex and very intricate thing. It is very abstract. And it includes many different things that define who you really are. Such as your upbringing, or the cultural influences, or the environment, or the language, or the ethnicity, as well as your religion. And as the pinnacle of our identity is our religion, and it drives us towards the actions and the goals and the perseverance that we should have throughout our lives, this is the crux of the topic today. Now relevant to our earlier discussion and what everyone, I hope most people are aware of, the issue of looking up to role models. And we talk about the youth oftentimes looking up to different role models, at times usually in a negative context, but look at the positive role models that many Muslims look up to, even if what they're doing might not be fully endorsed by Islam. Look at role models like Muhammad Ali, rahimahullah, the recent boxer who passed away. And the reason I'm using him as a role model for the youth, or referencing him rather, is because many youth felt more confident about being Muslim, knowing that Muhammad Ali was openly Muslim, and he would preach his Islam his Muslim identity. He was proud of it. He would not hide it. And anyone who's ever watched his interviews, you know how proud of Islam he was. You know how blunt he was, how candid he was. He was not ashamed to say that he was Muslim or to practice his Islam or even to preach his Islam because he knew with confidence that this is the truth. We have another example from last night. Some of you might be aware, as many of you were here in the earlier session, and we mentioned the uh, UFC fighter, Khabib, right? How many of you have watched or seen some of the highlights or clips? Don't be ashamed to raise your hand. Just a few people. How many of you are aware of what I'm talking about? The fighter, Habib. So he won the match, absolutely obliterated his opponent, alhamdulillah, because the man was insulting him and his religion and his father, and his family, and his ethnicity, and so on and so forth. It is, not a, it is not for marketing for you to insult one's religion. Our core beliefs as human beings are sensitive. Whether it's politics, as we see right now, it's very volatile. Or it's your religious beliefs, or it's your culture, or something you have an opinion about. And so, we mention examples of Muslim figures and identities that the youth do look up to. And they say, I'm proud that this person is Muslim, and now I can say I am Muslim. You can always say you're Muslim. And it's important to feel confident in your identity. It's important to feel like you have something valuable to give and to share with others. And we go back even to the time of Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar, when he accepted Islam, I'm paraphrasing the incident, he asked, Ya Rasulullah, are we not upon the truth? The Prophet ﷺ affirmed, yes. Umar anhu said, then why are we in private? Why are we practicing in private? Remember, they were being harassed and abused. And Umar anhu decided to go out and pray in front of the Kaaba for the first time. In public, in front of Quraysh. And as we know from Umar anhu, he was strong, he was big, physically as well, he was very strong. And he used to wrestle before and after Islam. So Umar radiallahu anhu went out and they prayed for the first time. He was given the nickname al farooq The one who distinguishes between truth and falsehood. He's not afraid. And his confidence in his iman and his Islam, his submission to the Creator is so great 
that even the shaytan would flee from a path that Umar is taking, as is authentically reported from the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is Umar. It's not a UFC fighter running away, it's not a boxer running away. People would run away. The shaytan would run away. An interesting incident of confidence from a youth at that time, when Umar was Khalifa radiallahu an. One time he was walking down the road and several youth were playing and then they saw Umar coming, so they ran. Except for one. Does anyone know who it was? Who was the one person who stayed? The one teenager that stayed or the one youth who stayed? Anyone? It was Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu. Zubair ibn Awam, one of the ten who were giving glad tidings. His son Abdullah was one of the bravest people as well. Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu was known for his bravery, not just because he randomly became brave, his parents were very brave. His mother, Asma, was one of the bravest people in history. And his father, as zubair And his grandfather as well. So when we talk about confidence, what does this youth do? Umar is walking up to him and everyone ran away. And Abdullah is standing there and he asks, Umar asks, why didn't you also run? He said, I didn't do anything wrong for me to run. And the road is wide enough for both of us. Umar radiallahu anhu smiled and he said, you are your father's son. Meaning you're just like your father. You're very brave, very courageous. And so when we talk about brave identity or magnified Muslim identity, we all know examples and tidbits from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now the reason I want to use the thematic understanding and commentary of Ibrahim alayhi salam is because we hear about him often in many different contexts and stories, but because of his nickname. What was the nickname of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? Anyone want to say it out loud? Khalilullah or Khalilul Rahman, so the friend of Allah. And during Al Isra wa Al Mi'raj, Ibrahim alayhi salam was in the seventh of heavens. And this shows us his status. How does a person attain such a status? Because not every prophet was at that level. The prophets themselves and messengers were at different levels. Ibrahim alayhi salam, I want to give you seven examples from his life. These are known examples, but when you look at them in one context, you see what kind of identity he had, what kind of courage and bravery he had as a submitter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first is that Ibrahim alayhi salam was resilient and he was confident and he was persistent in his search for truth. And he did not give up on searching for truth. When he saw the sun, and he said, this must be God, and then the sun set, this cannot be God. When he saw the moon, when he saw the stars, he's looking for the truth and he's not giving up on his pursuit of truth. Why do I bring this up, even though we might all say, it does not apply, we're Muslims. Even as Muslims, we struggle. And there are things that we know we can do better with, we can improve in certain areas, we can avoid certain sins, overcome certain bad habits. But sometimes we give up very quickly. Ibrahim salam was very persistent. And we ask Allah to grant us persistence. Number two, Ibrahim salam rejected what all of society was doing. Not just one group of people. Not just a random trend. His society was worshipping idols. And we hear this often. But I want you to put yourself in his shoes. And imagine for a moment, you were the only Muslim in an entire land or society. And everyone there worshipped idols. And not only did they worship idols, they expected you to worship idols. They found it odd and bizarre that you would not worship idols. Imagine not just being a part of that society, but you are young as well. And so he's also perhaps looked down upon it. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about. Ibrahim alayhi salam went against all of that. Do you know the amount of courage it takes to resist peer pressure? Not as children, as adults. Based on studies, when everyone around you in an environment is doing something that you think maybe I should fall in line, it's easy to fall in line. But it takes courage to do what you think is correct. It's easy to go with the flow, but it takes courage to stand up for what's right. Ibrahim resisted all of his society. 
And he did not resist in silence, he spoke up. He spoke up because it was an injustice against their own nafs to worship idols when they cannot benefit you, when you manufacture them, when Allah created you. Can you imagine a youth speaking up to an entire society? How brave they must be in their identity, how brave they must be in their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's an interesting thing I did a few times in some lectures and workshops, and I'll never do this again, and I'll tell you why. I would ask for three hidden volunteers in advance, and I would tell them that I'm going to ask for volunteers, four, during the lecture, and I want you three to raise your hands so that I can choose you. So these three people are usually sitting somewhere in the front. And the fourth person that I call upon is from anywhere in the crowd. These three people in advance are told to do one thing. When you are called, stand up, and suddenly when I start talking again, I want you to just sit down, without me saying anything. So the three people would stand up as I choose each of them. The fourth person who does not know what's happening would also stand up. Once I continue talking, those three people know what to do, they sit down. What does the fourth person do? They sit down. Now this is a very minor example. And I'm not talking about children, I'm talking about adults. This is a minor example that we do things and we talk to our children about peer pressure, but we do things at times to conform without thinking twice why. And there are a lot of interesting social experiments observing such behavior in public, in private, wherever we are. Sometimes we do and say and act and uh, have routines and habits based on what society wants or expects. A society, especially here, does not have a specific expectation. Why? Because it is a melting pot of different cultures, different religions, different walks of life. And as Muslims, we say with conviction and with pride that we will not compromise our religious principles for any social norms. Our religious principles are fixed, whereas other matters are flexible, whereas culture plays a role. And later on, we will talk about culture, inshallah. So when we talk about resisting peer pressure, it applies to us as much as it applies to our children. And it takes a lot of courage to be able to do so. Some people live their lives always wanting validation from others. Always just wanting to be accepted by others. Not realizing that maybe, and to relate to the previous talk, Jazakumullah Khairan, maybe they're not happy because they're always trying to be validated by others. In fact, some studies uh, concluded that people pleasers, people who live their entire lives only worrying about what others think, at the expense of their own happiness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't end up being happy. And I'll give you a minor example. I've given this example before because it is humorous and it drives home a lesson. The example of the character Juha. How many people heard of Juha? A few hands? Okay. So Juha is, I hope, uh, a fictional story in which a lesson is driven home through a funny uh, story. So Juha is riding one day in the desert on a donkey and his son is walking next to him. They pass by a group of people and they start criticizing and Juha hears them. What do they say? They criticize and they say, look at this father, he's riding the donkey and he's making his young son walk in the desert. What kind of parent does that for their child? So they criticize and Juha wants to please people, he's a people pleaser. So what does he do? He gets off the donkey and he tells his son to ride. They pass by a different group of people. And these people look at them and say, what kind of terrible son is that? Where is Bidr al-Walidayn? He's riding the donkey and his father is walking in the desert. He should switch with his father. And they start gossiping and criticizing. And Juha is becoming upset. He wants to please people. So after a while he says, let's both ride the donkey and nobody can criticize. What happens? They pass by another group of people. And when they pass by this third group of people, they say, this poor donkey. Why are two people riding it? Why doesn't one of them walk? And Juha is going absolutely crazy. He's a people pleaser to the maximum level. He says, what can I do? There's nothing I can, oh, I got an idea. My son, let's both walk and nobody will talk. They both get off the donkey and they're walking and they pass by another group of people. And these people look at them and say, these foolish human beings, why doesn't one of them ride the donkey? Why are they both walking in the desert? And they're talking, and they're talking, and Juha's going crazy, and finally he says, My dear son, we must carry the donkey. 
and they pass by a group of people and they burst out laughing, what are you fools doing? The donkey doesn't need to be carried. And they talk and they talk and they talk. Juha is trying to please people in ways that are not natural. I'm not saying we should not care about what people think. No, on the contrary. We do care and we're considerate. And we do, we do have uh, in our sunnah from the Prophet وسلم, the exemplification of being easygoing people. But it does not mean you are seeking your happiness and your validation through other people's uh, acceptance of your actions, through your social media accounts, how many likes and follows and tweets and shares. That does not give you happiness. How do we know this? There are people with millions of followers and fame and wealth and that does not make them happy. And there are people with none of that who are extremely happy. So if you are thinking of your identity as a Muslim and you're thinking about the pressures of society around you, realize that giving up your Islam or your Muslim principles or identity will not make you happy in the short or the long run. That was number two. Number three, Juha went against his own father, not just society, who manufactured the idols. Although he did this very gently and very wisely, his own parent was the one manufacturing idols. And he spoke truth to his parents. He did not shy away from the truth even when it came to his family members. And at times we see conflicts between religion and culture. Where culture is taken as religion and religion is of lower priority. A topic we'll address today inshallah. But Ibrahim salam did not shy away and this shows us another element of his courage. Number four. Ibrahim alayhi salam showed resilience and exemplified courage and bravery in his identity when he was threatened and thrown into the fire. Ibrahim alayhi salam, even when he was approached according to some reports by Jibreel alayhi salam, uh, do you need any help? And he said, Allah will take care of me. His trust is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're throwing him in a fire. At what point do you say, okay, my identity uh, is not going to cause me harm physically. I'm not going to handle this much further. How great or magnified is our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, Ibrahim alayhi salam exemplified courage in his identity when he spoke truth to power. Nimrud, the Babylonian king, when Ibrahim alayhi salam spoke to him, he challenged him. And he defeated him with a very simple and straightforward logical argument. If you say you are God, then go ahead and fulfill this challenge. Why? Because Nibirud was saying, I can give life and death as well. So he basically took a man and he had him executed and he freed another man and said, this man was given life, therefore I am God. So Ibrahim challenged him, alayhi salam. He spoke truth to power. Do not be shy when it comes to injustices, regardless of the power or status or authority of the person you're speaking to. We are an ummah established on justice. And it does not matter who's on the other side, even if it's our family. We advocate for justice consistently, even if it is against ourselves. If you committed a crime, if you made a mistake, then have the courage to admit that it was a wrongdoing. Because otherwise, we would be committing injustice. Number six, Ibrahim alayhi salam exemplified trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and courage in his submission to Allah when he left uh, Hajar and Ismail in the desert and they too had trust in Allah. And we see the result of that is what? Flowing zamzam until the end of times. Zamzam water until the end of times. A gift to the world and to the ummah. Because of that moment in which they have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number seven, Ibrahim alayhi salam exemplified his resilience in his identity when he was commanded to sacrifice his son. The coolness of his eyes, the beloved. Can you imagine such a test which we commemorate every year? Ibrahim alayhi salam reached the level of Khalilullah, Khalil Rahman through many different incidents and aspects of his life that exemplified courage and strength and steadfastness, istiqama in his identity as a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so to summarize these points, we remind ourselves, number one, of the importance of dua for istiqama, dua for firmness. The most frequent dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa according to many companions was what? 
يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك Oh Allah, controller of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon your faith. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh Allah, controller of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon your faith. And the second point we remind about is the importance of seeking knowledge to give ourselves more confidence. You know when you have done research on a topic and you are asked to present about it, or you have uh, finished your master's thesis or a dissertation for your PhD, you know the topic well. So you have confidence in speaking about it. If you want more confidence in your faith, then we have to be consistent in seeking religious knowledge. It is not a side thing. It is not something that should be of lower priority than secular education in terms of the time and the commitment and the consistency. Alhamdulillah, in 2018, we have so many resources. We really don't have an excuse not to seek knowledge consistently. Seeking knowledge improves and increases one's confidence in their identity. And then number three, we need to surround ourselves with good environments, good companionship to help facilitate such strength and so that we are constantly growing and helping and supporting one another. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us strength in our identities. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who controls the hearts, to keep our hearts firm upon his faith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to make us a reason for others to be inspired, to be strong in their faith. وصلي اللهم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته